Mr. Speaker, this is what Colm Embert was supposed to do. Mr. Speaker, I want to put into the public record the following information. Because Trinidad and Tobago is known to be outside of the hurricane belt and not a victim of what our neighbors so tragically endured, we could benefit from the existence of the international cruise industry, which is expanding rapidly. It shows no signs of slowing down anytime in the near future. According to Cruise Lines International Association, the industry is expected to witness the arrival of 26 new cruise ships worldwide in 2017. Yes, Randolph, the connection dropped, so I was waiting. I didn't do anything. 26 new cruise ships worldwide in 2017 as the cruise lines are all set to serve an estimated 25.3 million passengers this year. 25.3 million passengers this year. The Cruise Lines International Association suggests that a total of 97 new cruise ships are expected to enter the scene between 2017 and 2026 with an estimated investment of 53 billion. Now I want to tell you this. Besides being a hub for cruise, check how your work is here, Mr. Speaker. We're going to build 15 cruise ship docks in Tobago. We're going to invite the private sector to invest with us because a lot of them sitting on some money. And cruise liners, when they pull up, they pay docking fees and it's a hefty sum of money. Like how our marina works. And we have marinas in the country so that we know that the private sector would make money just docking the ships. The cruise ship industry alone could bring to Tobago a million visitors a year. And a million visitors at an estimated thousand US dollars for a trip to Tobago on land. That's a billion US dollars a year. That is twice the budget of Tobago. A billion US dollars is seven billion TT dollars. They got 2.5 billion this year. But make it worse, Mr. Speaker. We can, in Trinidad, because Trinidad is the industrial island and Tobago is the tourist island, we can build cruise ship repair facilities in Trinidad so that cruise ships could also plan their redocking and restocking and they fix it to have to be go. You see, our labor is one seventh, our dollar is one seventh what they pay in America. So if they were to bring the repairs here on the fly, if I, I it keeps sticking, eh? so if the if the Facebook drops at all, head over to the YouTube video. Because the YouTube is running live as well. Right? And that is um I don't know if Maya is around or any of the others to tell you what it is. I think it's Pep Movement 1 or something. But you can find it. You can search it. Anyway, imagine if we could get docking fees, tourist money, and repair and stocking fees from Trinidad so that the cruise ship industry alone, I estimate, could bring about $10 billion to Trinidad and Tobago a year. Think about that. Think about that. Harmony of the Seas, Royal Caribbean's Oasis class vessel, Harmony of the Seas is currently the world's biggest cruise ship. I want to tell you about that. With a gross tonnage of 226,000 tons, Harmony of the Seas has a length of 362.12 meters and a maximum beam of 66 meters, featuring 2,747 staterooms with virtual balconies. The biggest vessel is capable of accommodating 5,479 guests at full occupancy. Now check this. That boat, if it dock in Tobago, 
spills out more than 10% of the population of Tobago into Tobago. Imagine if every week you get three like that. They will pick Tobago dry. They will pick Tobago clean. They will buy everything that you have to sell. They will buy things you didn't even know that you had to sell. I like your hat. I like your shoes. I like your shirt. I like your pants. How much for that? This is real money. Two US are taking it. Tulum and listen, Benny Balls, whatever it is we're making now. Just, just look at that. Just the cruise industry. Just that. The cruise industry could bring one and a half billion US dollars to Trinidad and Tobago in tourist arrivals, docking fees, repairs and restocking in Trinidad. And that's just cruise ships. We could be birthing in this country a hundred thousand yachts. During hurricane season, they come in here. They stuck into the sky. They put them up on racks. You could have made, instead of the foolishness that we build in Shagaramas, all that water park and all that nonsense, Shagaramas was supposed to be for that. Because it bring in hard currency. And then, because you have 100,000 yachts and pleasure craft in Trinidad, it will automatically create downstream industry. I had suggested in my 2015 manifesto that we would build a marine university, a serious marine university, that could teach people everything from sail making to boat building to engine building. You're supposed to be able to teach people craft. You're supposed to be able to teach them woodworking. I mean, you see the type of things that sailboats and pleasure boats need. Immediately from that industry, you could finance people and set them up with their own little business. Because, because I, have, I have friends with boats and they tell me a boat stands for bring out another thousand. Boat money is big money. Big, big money. Somebody say, the bigger the boat, the bigger the hole in the water, you're pouring the money in. Why that money can't be spending in Trinidad? We want seventh. We want seventh of their money. So they just need, because they, these fellas have money, these boats worth tens of millions of US dollars. And you can park it up in Trinidad when hurricane season done. They fly down a man to sail it back to wherever they are. And that's just cruise ship and yachting. The allure of the seas. The allure of the seas delivered in October 2010 has a capacity of 5,400 passengers. 5,400 passengers. Oasis of the seas, 5,400 passengers. Quantum of the seas, 4,180 passengers. Listen now. To make it perfect, perfect for the cruise line industry. Perfect. You don't have to do anything but build the facilities for them to dock. And if the government had the sense, they would let the private sector build the marinas. So they don't even have to spend government money. Let private sector money do it. You don't want Trinidad private sector money to do it? Call Brazil. Call India. Call China. Call America, call Canada, call Britain. Their investors will come and build all that we need and give us a chirp chirp, a 10%. They will give us a 15% for the rest of their lives. They will collect all the money if we don't have it. And that is just one, that's just cruise ship and pleasure craft, yachting industry. Move on from there, Mr. Speaker, because I want to tell you something, yeah? What we did in the budget, I told somebody today, what we did in the budget, we, we were told that our cost of living has increased and our income has decreased. And as a budget, we've said, Mr. Speaker, we are going to move all of the money that is in our left pocket and we're going to put it in our right pocket for the next 12 months. Because that's what we're doing by taxing the people. You have reduced the spending power of the average person 
to develop the country that you need developed. We've broken ourselves in a lack of pure foresight because the disposable income that the people need that you just took to run a country that you could have run with external business, lower the expenses, but we got to come to that. Because I want to tell you something. I want to give you some information. Sorry about taking so long. Eh? I just lost this thing when I lost everything there. But I want a dollar value of the. I'm looking for a dollar value of something to give you an idea. I'm not getting it. Oh, I've got it. This is the report. This is the report of the cocoa and chocolate market. Eh? Today, we're talking. Cherad cocoa lighting up Switzerland. Eh? Cherad cocoa lighting up Switzerland. Today, Cherad chocolate selling in Harrods in London. Eh? Harrods. I want to give you some numbers. Cocoa market is worth one hundred and thirty one point seven billion dollars. One hundred thirty one point seven billion dollars. I'm reading from market markets and markets dot com. Cocoa market worth two point one billion. Chocolate market from cocoa worth 131.7 billion US dollars. So if we break off 10% of that for Trinidad and Tobago, if we grow and process our cocoa, because what is selling in Harrods is Trinidad chocolate, not Trinidad cocoa. It processed and they're buying it in Harrods. If we break off 10%, if we break off 1%, that's two billion US dollars. That's two billion US dollars. Why we not in cocoa? Why we didn't walk away from the budget focused on cruise ship tourism, the yachting industry, and cocoa, Mr. Speaker? Stick up in. Our pepper. The scorpion, the Maruga scorpion pepper. You know what I'm talking about? The Maruga scorpion pepper is the second hottest pepper in the world. Second hottest. I want to get a number for you. I want to get a number for you. Sorry about this. I was prepared and we lost everything. Our pepper, Maruga scorpion pepper, the number two hottest pepper in the world, 90% of that pepper is used in pepper spray. Now, every standing soldier in the world wants a can of pepper spray. Every police officer in the world wants a can of pepper spray. Pepper spray expires in 90 days. Forget the private market. Forget the citizenry. Forget the fact that you can sell 5 billion canisters of pepper spray every 90 days. Forget the fact that if you took all of Karani land, all of it, all, and just grew Maruga scorpion peppers, we couldn't make enough. We couldn't make enough. So now, Maruga peppers, Maruga scorpion peppers, 
Coco, the yachting industry, cruise ship industry. Mr. Speaker, because those four industries are labor intensive, we will repurpose the billion dollars spent on CPEP and URB every year to paint stones and clean drains. We will repurpose that into the farming and tourism industry. We will repurpose that labor into a subsidy that we, the country, put into the farming and tourism sectors for the next five years. For the next five years, we will maintain the billion dollars spent on CPEP and URP so as to be able to provide labor subsidized to the tourism and the, and the agriculture sectors and they would have to slowly take it over and train. And as you train people, as you take my CPEP worker that I give you for free and you train him, hire him. Put him on your books. Your business starts to make money. You are taking over the responsibility. In five years, you have no make work programs. In five years, you have no make work program at all. Mr. Speaker, because the country is short $10 billion, we are going to cancel all road and highway expansions. We are going to repurpose the half a billion dollars that we were going to spend in Manzanilla. And we're going to stop all contracts right now and use any money that we could put our hands on to sell Trinidad and Tobago to the world. We are going to engage in a global massive marketing campaign to tell the world cruise ships and yachts come to Trinidad. Chocolatiers. Arms and ammunition manufacturers come to Trinidad and we're going to use that money to bring the world to invest in Trinidad. So foreign investors, but we will, we will set it up so that foreign investment shouldn't cross 50%. We need to make sure that there is space for our entrepreneurs to make some money too. So the reality of our situation is we are going to do this based on you can buy the entire crop but you can only own half the farm. So we make sure that our people get involved in food production and processing for the global market. You see, India did something like that in information technology. In information technology, India said they will start off as the call center of the world. But in 30 years, India is the number one nation for information technology on the planet and has, this, and has the largest middle class of any country in the world, India, 600 million middle class people started off answering the phone for, for, for Microsoft and Lotus 1, 2, 3. Remember that? Remember that? Well, Patrick Manning spent about $200 million building something called Intech Park in Wallafield. You all know this? You all been to Wallafield? There's something called Intech Park that Manning built that is a full information technology park that's built in Trinidad that we have since Manning was Prime Minister so 10 years has passed and you've done nothing with it so Mr. Speaker as we have no plans for it for the next 10 years I propose to go to Apple and Microsoft and any other IT company manufacturing Samsung you name it anybody that doing manufacture for this sector the Western Hemisphere, the Southern, the Southern Americas, the Caribbean and Latin America. We will give them for the next 10 years rent free in, in Tech Park because we've already lost 10 years and the jungle is trying to claim it back. If we bring it and we, if we bring them and we give it to them to use 10 years rent free, they will hire our people and they will put our people to work and they will train our people in information technology in Intech Park. So when that 10 year holiday is up and they start to pay rent, our people will be able to compete with them. So Mr. Speaker, 
We just went from a yachting industry, a tourism industry, an agriculture for export industry, and information technology. So we've given our people hope and opportunity. We've said that food self-sufficiency in five years is our goal. So we will make sure that all available farmlands not being used for pepper spray, pepper spray will be made available to farmers, entrepreneur farmers in one acre lots, one acre at a time. To move up from one acre to two acres to three acres to four acres, you have to be successful. And to be successful means you grow what we tell you to grow and we buy it from you at the price we agree on at the start. But you know that going in, you can make up one, two, three hundred thousand dollars in nine months. Growing peppers, growing popo, because popo is being used worldwide as a food substrate. A food substrate is something that you can repurpose to use as anything else, just add flavor. Popo has a good mouthfeel, so you could bite into it and think it's an olive. You could bite into it and think that it is a cherry. They, they just add flavors to it and sell it as something else. And, and half of those things that we import um, for, for putting in sweet bread, you know the things they're talking about, the little yellow and green things? Half of that, popo. We could be growing anything that we need. Susan Lua in one of the meetings suggested find the five biggest crops that Trinidad imports and find out from them what we could grow and grow those. Grow those so that we're not only growing it, we could consume it. So we're not only putting our people to work, we're lowering our food import bill. Mr. Speaker, because corruption is such, is such a drain on the national treasury, we propose to shut down all special purpose companies. With immediate effect, Mr. Speaker, Sport TT, EMBD, EFCL, Udicot, they're all gone. We're shutting them down. The government is no longer going to be competing with the private sector, and we're not going to be spending money on useless, needless boards that just drain money and end run the tenders process. We are going to reintroduce the National Tenders Board for the issuing of all contracts. And all contracts must be done in a transparent manner with an arm's length distancing between the ministry and who, are, who actually gives the contract in the end. We also propose, Mr. Speaker, that all local contracts, when I say local, read constituency level contracts, must be given to contractors, builders, and crafts and tradesmen within the constituency where the contract is being given out to guarantee that treasury funds are being spread throughout the economy and not making singular one, two, three finances into billionaires while the rest of the people crying in the ghetto. Because if we spread the money throughout the con con country, we could do massive development simultaneously, put a lot of our people to work at the same time, and create an environment where people in, in the community in which they live could benefit and contribute. Because you're, you're doing the work in the constituency, you're getting paid in the constituency, and you're spending money in the constituency. So that is a win Win, win. Mr. Speaker, we also propose to reduce all expenses. We produce to make the generation of electricity free within five years. Trinidad and Tobago burns its natural gas. The market for natural gas may never recover to the point where we could use more than 40% of our natural gas, meaning 60% of our gas will be flared into the atmosphere for no reason. That gas could be used to generate electricity for our commercial and public or private housing sectors and give them their electricity for free. We will also encourage people to use alternative means of energy and we are going to pass legislation that allows you to feed power back into the grid and instead of a bill at the end of the month, you could very well get a check. Because if your consumption of electricity is lower than what you generated, you could be making money from your house. Mr. Speaker, traffic is a problem in the country. We want to work with the private sector. We already rent a lot of buildings from private sector in Port of Spain. We're going to give the private sector the 
the ability to seize upon this initiative and do a 50-50 perpetual joint venture with the government. And this is how it will work. They put up all of the money. We put up all of the land. They build all of the buildings, operate and maintain it. And we will generate a 50-50 split on the revenue for all those buildings. That new government campus that we want to build in the center of the island will bring to an end all of the traffic that starts at Arima and deep south on a morning, trying to get 250,000 people into Port of Spain. Now they will all head to the center of the island where this new government campus will be set up to do government work. We will work as far as possible to make all government services that can be available online, available online. So that on your computer, you could renew your driver's permit and unless they need to see you, you will get your permit in the mail. You will pay with your credit card. We will work towards making the, the, the birth certificates, passports. These are machine generated, machine readable, but you don't have to show up in person to order it. If you could make an appointment online, you could take a picture online and you can get your passport in the mail. We could do that sort of business so that we don't need a passport office. We don't need a passport office at all. Mr. Speaker, it is estimated there is between one and 350,000 illegal immigrants in Trinidad and Tobago. And while a lot of them are hardworking people, because they are outside of the system, they do not contribute their fair share of taxation outside of the value added tax. We propose to regulate all who are gainfully employed so that they can become taxpaying members of the country and everybody else round them up and deport them because they are putting a strain on all of the services of the country and not contributing towards them. We need a country that is properly run from the top down. We need to make sure that the banks and the financial sector respect the people of this country. To that end, we propose that from today, all bank fees come under the purview of the central bank governor, and it will be done in, in relation to set market values worldwide. We propose to instruct and to open the financial sector to global competition. We propose that banks must once again pay interest on depositors' funds. Any bank that cannot afford to pay interest on depositors' funds welcome to shut their doors and leave Trinidad and Tobago. We propose that banks must pay, in pay interest on depositors' funds in terms dictated by the central bank. These terms will be fair and will, be, will allow for a proper management of the economy and the banks. We will make sure that the, that, the, that the market is competitive, but the public must benefit from the value of their money. Forcing the banks to pay interest on public funds once again will force the banks to work that money as they used to do and generate billions of dollars in profits at the end of the year, making credit available to the market. But Mr. Speaker, it wouldn't make sense to do that if we are still competing with drug money hiding in restaurants, nightclubs, and real estate, to name a few. So we plan to build a maritime security wall that finally and completely shuts down this nation's borders to bring to an end the drug trade, human trafficking, gun smuggling, and the money laundering empire that has destroyed this country's economy. We also plan to remove the port of Port of Spain from where it is to point Lissas, to a facility five times the size, to ensure that what is not unstuffed on the port is at least scanned, so that we know for a fact that we can bring all smuggling to a complete end, so that the Trinidad Tobago Police Service will be able to pick up all the illegal guns that are in the country while preventing any further guns from coming into the country, and deal with the issue of money laundering once and for all. With no U.S. dollars being able to be imported in chicken parts, car parts, and plywood, the real, United, the real trade and foreign exchange will be regulated and shared equitably. We will manage the flow of foreign currency so that big man and small man all get a, a, an equal bite at that time. We will ensure that in, with immediate effect, there be an, a financial services ombudsman with teeth 
to make sure that insurance companies pay on duly submitted claims within three months. If they fail to pay within three months to fully paid up clients, they must sue the client for fraud in a special insurance facility court created to allow for that. If they lose the case, if they use the case to waste time and lose the case, the judge, the court could order that insurance company to pay up to 10 times the value of the initial claim. We need to get back to a situation in this country where the business community and the financial sector work in harmony with the national community in the best interest of all. We must no longer have a nation of overnight billionaires and paupers and peasant class. We must make sure government funds is used effectively to the benefit of all. To that end, we will sell all businesses in which the government has a stake. The government has zero business being in business and should have no interest competing with the private sector. The idea that we could create companies on the stock market for the public to invest in, while it sounds sensible, saying it out loud, is just creating an arm's length avenue for corruption. The reality of the truth is, whatever we own, we need to sell. We need to sell it all. And all of that money should go back into the, the consolidated fund. Finally, the most important point in the redevelopment of Trinidad and Tobago is a policy we call home ownership for all. We propose with immediate effect to start a program of evaluating the, the value of every purchaser who, in, who has interest in owning a home, first time homeowners, up to $1.5 million. We propose zero deposit, zero interest for 30 years so that even minimum wage homeowners could own a home. Government will work joint venture partners with local and international private sectors, private sector firms to bring cheap housing, proper housing to Trinidad and Tobago so that the average person, the average person will be able to finally own a home. But to prevent that market from being subsumed by the drug money and the corruption dollars still in the market, we propose a property tax, an escalating property tax. We say that if on your primary residence, on your home, the state will charge 0% property tax, 0%. But your second home, we will charge 5%, and your third home, we will charge 10%, and your fourth home, we will charge 15%, and your fifth home, 20%, escalating until you are paying 100% of the value of the house that you are hiding money in back to the state. Yes, there are going to be people who are interested in renting and rental agencies will be created but under strict rent controls to make sure that the public not being taken advantage of. Real estate home ownership is very important to the country that we want. The reality of the situation is food, water, clean air and a place to live. Once we make sure that our citizens have access to proper education, healthcare, security the person, affordable food, and a home, the country will work. We've just said that everything that you wanted to do could have been done in this budget. Nothing I just said called for more money than we had. We could have done joint ventures with local funds and international fund, fund agents for anything that needed extra, extra money. All of that as a business plan will bring Trinidad back to being 60, 70, 80 billion dollars net earner with only 30 to 40 billion represented by oil and gas. So anytime it crosses that magical 45 dollars a barrel, all the rest of that money will go into the Heritage and Stabilization Fund and we will race to catch up with Holland who are doing gas and oil 20 years while we're doing it for 100 years and they already have money put aside in their Heritage and Stabilization Fund for the next 900 years. The reality of our situation is while the Saudis could say they don't care if the price of oil comes down to a dollar a barrel, every single cent that it decreases, this country gets worse. We cannot continue to run this country shooting at whatever and calling whatever we hit the target. We need a plan. We need a policy that leaves no citizen behind. We must ensure at the end of it all, people can afford a home, can be able to afford to feed their families, can have access to quality health care, 
proper education and security of the person. We believe in the mandate that the well-being of the citizenry is the primary function of government and will dedicate ourselves to that. 